Well, it's that time again, Paul. The Euro European Tour kicks off this week in Leverkusen. It's silly season for travelling. <laughs> Just a little bit. Uh, obviously, I'm working for the radio on Thursdays and a lot of the players are playing Premier League on Thursdays, so getting to the arenas uh, in plenty of time to, to play competitively on the European Tour, it's a real grind. But I can't wait to get back to the European Tour. Genuinely, when it finishes in October, we're very upset because we can't wait for it to start again. It's, uh, it's where Dart is for, for me now in continental Europe. It's, it's starting to branch out a little bit more and playing in front of those raucous crowds is just great because if you're not motivated when you play the European Tour, you should stop playing Dart. Well, we've got new venues as well. We're going to have to go into Copenhagen this year, which will be amazing to tackle that market as well. Yeah, new venues are going to swallow this year. Uh, my birthday weekend in May, which will be very interesting. Yeah. But it, the Denmark one is, is the real marquee thing for 2018 because this is the first venture into Scandinavia for the PDC and the natural progression for me was Denmark. Uh, I'd love to see them go to Sweden. Finland are starting to get some, some real stars. Uh, over the years I've had some really good players come through but I think it's time to go north. Uh, and starting with Denmark, see how that goes and if that's successful I can definitely see Northern Scandinavia in the future. As well, for a player's point of view, financially, the benefits are there as well for rankings and obviously your prize money because you only have to win five games to potentially win 25,000 compared to double that on the Pro Tour, the games you win. That's exactly what Michael van Gerwen thinks. He's got to win less games for more money and that's one of the reasons why he's won so many European tours, more than anybody has. But going forward, to emphasise the importance of the European tour to the fans out there, if you go to the qualifiers that I'm involved in and some of the other guys are, the intensity of those qualifiers is magnified like no other thing. You find that the intensity is more than pro to us because they understand how important these European tour events are. Just to get there, you're guaranteed a thousand pounds, but it's not just about that. It's the opportunity to double your money again and have the real opportunity to get that 25,000 pound check. Look at what it did for Steve Beaton a few years ago when he came out of nowhere, what it seemed, and, and won a tournament. Um, people now see these events as the precursor to winning majors. I would say they're almost mini majors because it's given people its stage experience, um, TV experience, as in they're streamed live like Unibet do all the streaming for it so people can watch every dark throne like a major. Yeah, you do well on the European tour and you find yourself confident enough to go and win bigger tournaments. It's, it's just a natural progression. I see the, the people that haven't won a European tour title um, people like Joe Cullen for instance who has always played well in Europe and has always been a seed for the last couple of years that his next progression is to win a Euro event and I'd like to see him do well this year he hasn't had a great start this season but the next step for him is doing one of those well the likes of Michael Smith learned to win again on the Euro tour he went yeah. through that little dip in form came back and won European titles which is amazing yeah I mean Michael Smith has always played well in Europe he's yeah, had a bit of an affinity with Eastern, Eastern Germany at the time, but he, he's won uh, in four different venues, I believe. And he's one of the only people who's actually got multiple uh, tour titles in Europe. I and mean, I'm very, very jealous of him, the fact that he's done that. I've been to a couple of, couple of finals myself, but to win those tournaments, you've not only got to be an incredible player these days, but you've got to be able to play all day Sunday from about one in the afternoon all the way through to about half ten at night, even eleven o'clock now. Just showed as well the strength of the seeding. The fact that the likes of old faces like James Wade, Steve B, and A.D. Lewis and Chris Doby had to qualify for this first event. Precisely. Um, there are people who miss the European Tour for long streaks because they find it hard to get through the qualifiers. I, I admire the likes of Ian White, for instance, because he is constantly keeping himself in that top 16. And if you're constantly accumulating that ranking money, you can keep yourself there and give yourself opportunities. And he's another one who potentially is looking at European Tour titles as the next stage. He's won bucket loads of Pro Tour events, but now it's time to get that next step. And a European title for him in 2018, I think, is very, very possible. Also, two debutants in Leverkusen. We've got Cameron Menzi, which he's, everyone's having a bit of a love affair with him at the moment. He's absolutely crackers. And Jamie Hughes qualifying more at the first attempt. Yeah, I'm happy for Jamie Hughes. I think he's settled into the PDC quite well. Uh, I'd like to see Jamie Hughes take baby steps. Uh, he's had a few massive games so far. I remember he's played Rob Cross and given him a bit of a touch up in a, a massive average game. But Jamie Hughes is a proper dart player for me. He's got real purpose in that arm and I think he could be very dangerous for people. Menzies, 
absolutely mad as a box of frogs, and every time I see him, I, I call him a box of frogs now. <laughs> but he is crackers, and he is television gold. He may not be everybody's cup of tea as a player, from a player perspective, because he's all over the place. Uh, he's a bit like Kermit the Frog, really. But from a, a visual perspective, he's not boring, and he's Scottish. I think there's something to love about him. No, of course. The negative downside to the European tour, I suppose, is the, the scheduling. Take um, the one in, where are we, Belfast, after Belfast, where players that will get from the Premier League in Belfast to Munich mm. to p play, scheduling, that's a nightmare. Well, it's Easter weekend as well, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, you know, I really feel for not just the players, but the, the support staff, some of the security guys, the press people have got to get there. Um, it, it's really, really difficult. And, in different sporting industries, you just have to manage it. I know that uh, golf tournaments, for instance, when Rory McIlroy uh, had, had a meltdown at the Masters a few years ago, he was scheduled to play in Malaysia the following week, and he lost his clubs in between. Uh, sometimes you've just got to find a way to do it, and you've got to get on that plane. I know some people who don't like flying, for instance, Luke Humphreys, I yeah. heard this weekend, doesn't even fly. Imagine if he was in the Premier League and had to get to Munich. I mean, that's a nightmare in itself, but just got to find a way, be comfortable. And, and I found with traveling, the, the knack to it is to relax while traveling. So if you can get someone to drive you that will give you that extra 10 points in your average so you can have a bit of sleep, do it. And find a way to sleep on a plane because it's those little bits of rest that can make all the difference. No, exactly. I say the European tour is absolute gold. The likes of Gary Anderson, again, has said he's not going to play in it this year. Mistake or the right thing for Gary? Based on last year, it was a stroke of genius because all he did was win loads of Pro Tour events based in the UK. He got to spend a bit more time with his family. I think based on his wants and needs right now, it's the right thing to do. It's a shame for us because we don't get to see his, his brilliant ability uh, in different parts of Europe. I know there's a lot of the fans out there would love to see him, but it's a personal choice and I respect it. Um, other guys, however, people who live in the Netherlands, Belgium, it's easier for them to get there. They can drive without having to go over the channel. So it, it's all about picking and choosing events, like we've mentioned before. Uh, for some guys, it, it works. Some guys, it doesn't. But I think Gary's choice is, is right for him, and it's not doing him any harm right now because he's still winning. Especially from a player's point of view as well, the fact that the likes of Unibet stream every game, sponsorship is easier to come by as well for these events because they're getting exposure they wouldn't normally get on a pro tour. Well, it's, it's different kinds of exposure too because... You've got people who uh, don't subscribe to certain things and they get to miss um, certain tournaments. Then they can use the radio, they can use live streaming for certain events, which obviously PDC TV and, and Unibet have, uh, have brilliantly done um, for 2018 coming up. So you've got these opportunities to watch world-class players in different places and sample different crowds via an internet streaming way. And I think that in itself is, a, is the futuristic way of watching sport, not just darts. Agreed. Obviously, just changing the subject slightly, Paul, you must be over the moon with the way your season started. You qualified for one of the European tours back on our TVs at the UK Open. It's yeah. been a pleasing start for yourself. Yeah, it hasn't been too bad. I mean, I, I'm very realistic about the way I played at the UK Open. It was pretty dire, actually, I, averaging the 80s, but that's what everybody was doing because it was so cold. Uh, as far as my own performances uh, this season are concerned, there have been some really good games, some good statistics. I seem to be hitting a lot of 180s for some reason, so I'll see if I can keep trying to do that. But uh, really good start. Now we've got to kick on. We've got to go a little bit further, aim for board finals in the Pro Tour, but really looking forward to Zarbrook and where I played last year. Uh, I've got a win there, so hopefully I can do the same and even kick on even further. Long-term goals for 2018. What would be a successful season in your eyes? Keep my tour card is uh, is a very good, very good season for starters. I want to aim not too far in the future because I want to maintain what I'm doing right now. But I've only got two goals: one, keep my card because I do not want to go to Q school again, <laughs> desperately. And secondly, I want to make the World Championships because I was there with Talksport uh, back in December and January, and just seeing everybody from the other side of the fence was fantastic, and I loved working at it. But my was I jealous of the guys going on stage. Um, I really wanted to be up there. And I've got a score to settle with Benito van der Pass. Yeah. Because he was the guy that beat me when I was up there. And he beat me again in the European Tour, funnily enough, in Zarbrücken uh, last season. So uh, the next time 
Uh, I get a stage game, I hope it's against him because I've got a bit of a score to sell against him and I have told him that. Brilliant, Paul, always a pleasure to have you on Live Darts. Thanks very much Thank for Thank you very much for having me. Pleasure. Cheers.